Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and it is Monday. I am also technically still on a bit of a break. Um, been taking the last few days and probably the next couple of days to figure some shit out in my own world. Uh, however... As kind of expected, but kind of hoped that it wouldn't happen. Um, I always find that without purpose and, like, duty and things to do, uh, I just fall apart. And that's part of the point of taking a break in this instance, is that I recognized that I was falling apart anyway and decided that I might as well do that quickly and get it over with so that I can put myself back together and get back to doing things that I care about. Um, but I am blah all over the place at the moment. However, um, I woke up this morning to some messages in my Discord that, uh, thanks GK, uh, that informed me that legendary animator Yasuo Otsuka died this morning, uh, passed away. And um, the... As, as sad as that is, and it is sad, loss is always sad, death is always sad, the wonderful thing about artistic people and people who put things out into the world is that once they are gone, they are not gone um, because their legacy lives on. And that sounds like a truism and a platitude and blah, 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 and you can look at it that way, but I don't. Uh, Yasuo Otsuka's influence and existence in the, the, the scheme of animation over the last 45 50 years has been ever present and so I decided to watch something and uh, the thing that I decided to watch was not an anime and I don't know how this is gonna go because it's not fucking anime um we're gonna watch a documentary this is Yasuo Otsuka's Joy in Motion uh I went and grabbed a copy of this off of Nya uh a copy uploaded by Neo1024 um cool uh, that's the version that I grabbed. It has subs. There's also a couple, there are also a couple of, like, little mini videos. I'll, I'll pull one up and show you part of it right now, because it's, they're, it's super cool. Um, that are Yasuo Otsuka animating Goemon, uh, which I'm not sure if you say it Goemon or Goemon, or I think it's Goemon. Um, but it, it, this is a highly sped up, uh, uh, sequence of him animating a, a simple, simple sequence of sword draw and, and hack, hack, hack. Um, but it's fantastic to watch the way that he does his simple layouts uh, and sets out the motion of the characters before being more informed about their expressions or their hairstyles or any of that. And even that stuff is well detailed enough and creates shape and and weight uh, is not hyper detailed or hyper realistic. It's a very distinctive style that uh, pervades a lot of Otsuka's work. And that's really cool. But we're not going to watch a two-minute sped-up video of Yasuo Otsuka animating one sequence from, from Goemon. We're instead going to watch an hour and 47-minute documentary. Oh boy, I didn't realize it was that long. We might not watch the whole thing. Um, but we're going to watch some of this documentary because I want to. And that's that's the only reason that I need, honestly, is that I want to watch this thing. And I want to find out more about um, early animation techniques. And Yasuo Otsuka's... Uh, I, I, what would I say? Not gifts, but um, um, additions to the medium, shall we say. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by this. And also, I would, I would like to pay some homage to someone who has effectively influenced pretty much everything that I've ever seen, probably. Um, Otsuka is known not only as a legendary animator in his own right, but also as someone who inspired many, many people through his work and who directly mentored many, many people, including Hayao Miyazaki, uh, which is, you know, hard not to mention because that's fucking Miyazaki. Um, uh yeah, this dives into a whole era of animation that I'm not terribly familiar with. Um, my understanding of the animation industry really picks up in the 80s with the OVA boom, and um, I don't have that great a grasp on the earlier stuff. So I'm really interested in seeing how this plays out and what material is, is presented in this documentary. Let's watch this documentary. Uh, hopefully this will be somewhat entertaining. I don't, again, I don't know if I'm actually going to put this video up in any way, and I don't know that I can. Um, don't know how copyright will shake out for this really old documentary. Well, it's not that old as a documentary, but uh, it is out of print. Let's watch it, and we'll we'll maybe find out. Uh, I don't know if I'll do multiple versions. If I do this in a standard way, then there will be two versions of this reaction. 
thing, discussion thing. It's a documentary. How do I react to it? I don't know. Um, but there might be two, two versions. If there are two versions, there will be a picture-in-picture -picture version with the video up there in the corner, linked in the description, and a timer-based version up on YouTube. Uh, hopefully, I can just throw the video into the, t the, the YouTube version and not get copyright struck and just be fine. Um, but we'll see, and I'll have to test that out. Regardless, I've got it up. There may be a beep beep timer to count you down to zero if you want to sync up your own copy of the thing. And if there is, then it will come here. And if there's not, then there won't be one. And you'll know that, but I don't yet. Oh, I'll know in a couple of hours when I edit this thing together, but I don't, I don't know yet. Let's watch the thing. Beep beep timer. Hmm. Oh, that's kind of creepy. Oh, it's it's him because he draw he drew steam engines before he got into drawing other things. Oh, hi. Old Sky Yasuo-san. Hi, hi. Hmm. Lots of mechanical drawings. <sighs> cool, cool. Mm. Taught me all about motion. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's, yeah, let's journey away. Oh, hey, that's, that's the video. Wow. Right. Static drawings, little movement. Mm. 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 <laughs> of course. Oh, that's a good metaphor. Hmm. Yes. 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 Mm hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That shot. Did he also innovate the um the punch hole technique where he rotates the the page? Oh. Beautiful. Motion basics. Cool, 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 cool. Notes. <laughs> hmm.
Hmm. Limited frames. Yeah, but that's not not in four or five frames. How do you determine which frames? Sure, top, bottom. And then which one's in between? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's made of steel. That fully changes the thing. How do you demonstrate that? Of course, yes. Got up. <sighs> Mm. So it's Otsuka's knowledge of, of human proprioception that, that enables a lot of his motion. Yep. Yep. No, and if he does get it up, then he holds it there. Oh, it's so smart. Oh, it's so smart. Oh, it's so smart. <laughs> Except when it's not. Animation is just logical move. God damn it, Otsuka. Pretty fucking good. <laughs> Flip whip new paper. So he only gets it up to vertical. Yes. Yes. Oh, the hat flop. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mishizawa Chuson? And the bounce. The weight in the hips as he bends back. That's so good. <laughs> Nah, I'll just be I'll just become a Sarari man. It'll be fine. Oh. Hmm, is that where he saw his first train? Whoa. Ooh. Hmm, like a mallet, eh?
that's pretty cool. And they move. Jesus. That's dedication. We have it? Okay, that's some bullshit. That's some bullshit. It's more than that. He had an innate eye, man. L l like... Of course, he's making fucking full engineering drawings. Yeah. Aww. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Wow. It really is. That's incredible. Uh huh. Hunger. Really? I must go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I must move to the big city. Yeah. And movement and and bound movement on a on a track. Yeah, to under it, it's it's become immediately clear that a large portion of of his talent comes from an innate understanding of, or maybe not innate, but just because he started with mechanical objects that are bound by by levers and pistons and things, which is good. Hmm. Mm hmm. You'll sketch what you think it is instead of what it is. Right. Right, 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 right. <clears throat> Cars. All sorts of military transports. Oh my god. Oh my god, you can see how much better he got. Ah. Uh. Look at the tire treads. Oh my god. I can tell, Otsuka. I can fucking tell. 
And the notes on the back? Hmm. That is genuinely insane that those are all all pen drawings. People, uniforms, statues, little cartoons. Oh my god. Oh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Army comics. <laughs> no, you don't learn that in school. No, 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 no. Well, that sucks. Second time we've used the word hungry. <laughs> he perches. He perches. That's great. No. Hmm. Okay, so he went into government. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Cool. <laughs> yeah, immediately post war. Yeah. Hmm. Things to draw. <laughs> Terrible. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Right. Hmm. That's interesting that there was a legal a legal separation there. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Not taking care of self. I vibe with that. Oh, I do not have tuberculosis. Thank God. But I do vibe with that. Wow, two years. Wow. Yeah, what did he read? Hmm. Hmm.
A lot of drow, a lot of gray skies. Oh, hi. The who and the what? <laughs> the what films? The what films I've never heard of? Hmm. Hmm. Welcome to Toei. I wonder when we'll get to the, the overly realistic skeleton. Because <laughs> that's the only anecdote about Otsuka that I actually know about. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. I must, I must acquire this skill. I know the feeling. That is not a name that I know. Too real. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Ah, uh, yeah. That's actually incredible. <laughs> I know that feeling. You gotta go to Western Animators. Huh. Uh huh. Oh. Oh, absolutely. Wow, okay, so the bringing of one book copied by Preston Blair. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep. Difference between walk and run, center of gravity changes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Hey! And he got chewed out for it. 
Because it looks too, it looks too janky. It looks too real. <laughs> yep, it doesn't look right. Not in this sequence. It's amazing, but it doesn't fit. <laughs> Ay! Okay, that's... That's insane. Hmm. Hmm. Right, it just didn't quite fit. Humorously earnest bad guys, eh? Oh. That's insane. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Please give me an example. Please show me an example. I want to understand. <laughs> Please, documentary, show me an example. When you use all three dimensions and you're in control of your layouts. Ah! Got it. I, co I, I comprehend now. Ah, I comprehend more now. Wow. Oh, wow. And they dropped so much of the detail.
always a dangerous gambit, but it's it's the place where so many things have really occurred when a studio is just like, here, do a scene, do it how you however you want. Juan Cato, Juan Cato. creating franticness through those quick cuts and then drawing back. Wow. And a rotating shot. Wow. No. If they'll believe it, it's real. Mm. Right. Right. It just has to match. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Whoosh. Uh huh. Uh huh. The little things. That's fantastic. Oh. Ha. Huh. The point is gotten across. Slash, slash. Yep. Wow. <laughs> fast doesn't even occur in frame it jumps mm. that knack
Hmm. Would Jotska head down for physical objects, but not for motion? That's amazing. Not if you don't feel it. <laughs> says the man who's been making anime for fucking forever <laughs> yeah you just fall out of it you forget everything hmm In order to lead people, for sure. Hard agree. <laughs> Hard agree, you can see the difference when you look at works by different directors, man. You can see the difference. Wow. So young. He's so young. Oh, wow. Not yet. Not giants yet. Hmm? It's a serious story. Yeah, that's actually a huge divergent point. Like an animated film, it must be a comedy, it must be a kid's movie. Hmm. Show me example.
Ha, the wolves. Oh, there's our throw. Depth and immediacy. Wow. Wow. Of course he was. Yep. Oh, yep. Oh, totally. Look at the water. <coughs> Look at the water. Oh, my God, fishy boy. Oh, Jesus. Wow, he watched fishes flopping on flopping on boats. For sure. Why? Why? Ooh. Oh. Oh. Hmm. 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 Telling dramatic stories with dark characters. Hmm. Hmm. The classic self-sacrifice being something novel. Pretty interesting, right? How a few decades can change things so dramatically. That's awesome. I have goosebumps. Ooh, slow zoom. Okay. Oh, resignation. Oh! She knows there's no, no point in fighting. Huh.
makes sense. Somebody else handle that. I'll do scenes. That's that's so such an interestingly mature perspective. Oh fuck! Like <laughs> Oh my god. Hey, get that get that necklace. Wow. What a layout. Oh, wow. Oh, there's something time-based, I guess. They needed to, to put the amulet in the sunlight. Okay. And he's gone. Okay. Were those bats that just turned... Ooh, Lupin. Lupin pa. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, okay. Moving. Hmm. Hmm. Which is very different from animation. Another new perspective to gather. Yeah. So we had a better a better understanding of how particular scenes would impact the audience. No ka. No fight though. <laughs> Sorry, that's just great. Yeah, it's super different. Oh, goodbye. That's super cute. Oh, yeah, for sure. You're the the cars and trains and crazy shit, dude. Yeah. Steal, 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 and we grow as an industry. Oh, wow. No, that makes sense. Which is demonstrated by how they move. Right, of course. Standard episodic series. Right. Everyone reacts differently. Huh. Lupin. Lupin. 
Yeah, I see you over there in the corner, Lupin. I see you. Lupin fits all of them. Hell yeah. Better than most. Much better than most. Totally. Totally. The hands, the hair on the back of the palms. Yep, skinny, skinny limbs. Huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. The little loop. Hmm. Smaller toward the extremities. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Central. Right. Thin limbs, large, large appendages. Big hands. Yep. Which is much better for animating, isn't it? Yeah, because you can show big things moving around. Hmm, always some ankle. But there's character to that. <laughs> no. Hmm. Hmm. Pa. Yeah, lots of hair. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. References. And then how do you build a world where that fits? Right. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Loop on the third pilot film. Oh, cars. Ho, ho. Hey, the boy. Oh. 
Later. Wow, that explosion. <laughs> yeah, all the hair on the back. Wow. Hey, the woman named. Uh, 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 uh. Nah. Nah, nobody ever made a full length Peach Lupin film. To worldwide acclaim. Oh no, two terrible ratings! <laughs> Who would have thought? Hope oh, up. Nope. That's amazing. Uh, uh, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Oh, wow. Eh, ah, uh oh. <laughs> oh, I don't believe that's what bullets look like post firing, but that's okay. How could anyone hate this? Look at it. Look at that sunset sequence. <laughs> Crazy bastard. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Hmm, but in a very different way. <laughs> of course. Oh. <laughs> Oh, hi. <laughs> uh. Oh, okay. So this is a segmented clip from the whole thing. Cool. I'll, I will watch through happily. Because I only saw this in the sped up version, which didn't have his dialogue. Flesh, flesh.
you can see him applying his foundations in everything that he does. But it, it's like, it's magic. It's impossible magic. But it's not, because he's got all those foundations. Ah! Right. And suddenly it's a person. Right. Just for a flash. And that can be useful. Because he's engaging in battle now. I'm so yawny. I'm really enjoying this though. This is this is fantastic. Oh. In between the last two frames. Hmm. Whoosh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's such a, a dramatic difference between noticing, like, a mistake in flow of the animation and what he's noticed, which is that, that there's a, a mistake in conveyance. Way back, way forward. Yeah. Totally different. <laughs> Follow through. Ah. Uh... Oh, that sucks. Wow. Terrible. <laughs> There's a story arc there. Hmm. Yeah, which he still does. Still does. Miyazaki's layouts and storyboards are some bullshit. No, everything. Everything. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's too much work for any, any sane human being. Luckily, Miyazaki is not sane. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, bloomed into his own. Oh. 
Whoa. Fully changed. <laughs> Animation Hulk. That's the new name for Miyazaki. Yeah, because he did everything himself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just an outpouring, a flood. Uh <laughs> Again, that innovation comes after the understanding of the fundamentals. Always. No, but it's a constructed reality that you believe in because everything matches. Right. Hmm. 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 <laughs> yeah, all right, Miyazaki, just do all the key animation, sure. <laughs> Which he would continue to do throughout Ghibli. F fucking Miyazaki. I'll bet, I'll bet this is what I think. Yep. Yeah. And creating, creating flowing loops that actually mirror the curves of railroads in a huge way. Don't have him run straight toward the camera. Ha! <laughs> I didn't realize that he cut them. No, but... But that's the energy. Right. It's constructed reality. Mm-hmm. Nyeom. Yeah, this one. This is the one. That one. Meow. Meow. And I think there's one more cut afterward that. <laughs> Jesus.
Hmm. What's the point? What's the point? More cut <laughs> more Lupin. Yeah, put put Miyazaki in that role. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which has become the most known Lupin. No, but it brought in the audience immensely. Kinder, gentler Lupin. That's a way to put it. Wow. Wow. Also, whoops. Wow! And faster, 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 faster! Nyom! Nah, kid. All his hair stands up on end and then comes back. Oh. Oh. Mm. Except for the cats. I don't know anything about the series, so... Hmm. Kotabe? Thank you though. Thank you though. Oh, now you're crying in your okonomiyaki. Don't do that. That's gross, bud. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh god. Sizzle sizzle.
Hmm. There's a whole meta mini story about all the cats, I guess. Holy crap. Also, they have balls, which is... Which is very odd. <laughs> very strange. Holy crap. They're gonna have a moment. Oh, or he's just gonna die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it died, it died. Producer and teacher transition. Ooh, wait, was that what I think it was? Was that what I think it was? I'm pretty sure that it was. What the fuck? Oh. Oh. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Takahata Miyazaka Miyazaki, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Producer. Doka, doka. And then he's got an understanding of what you care about working on and tries to get you on those projects. <sighs> Teaching. Raising a new era. Yeah. No, he wants you to understand certain fundamental truths. That's super cool. Right. Hmm. 
<laughs> I would like to know. Good, good question. Yes, please, please. Can I just take a class? Can I just take a class? That would be great. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the hair. Yes. Oh, many. M many, many. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Coming up with their own something. Yep. Scribble, 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 done. <laughs> Oh, yep, uh-huh. Scribble, scribble. Some eyes, some mouths. Oh, we did it. It's a Lupin. It's a Lupin. <laughs> I mean, it's not, but, you know. Yes. Hmm. Whoop. <laughs> that's a character. That's that's a person. Fast, simple, and original. Along with perspective and immediacy. Yes. Lots and lots of those. <laughs> but it's not. Yeah. Hmm. Uh huh? Uh huh? Oh, fuck. That's terrifying. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Whoop. Scribble, 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 scribble. Okay. Anticipation. <laughs> so, 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 so. Oh, the leap. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, the anticipation being in there. Uh. That is a fantastic way to teach. I mean, it puts somebody in the hot seat, but if they're willing, that works. Hmm. Is he going to create humor from gravity's effect? Yeah. Yum. Oh, no. A splash. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Later. <laughs> oh, and then he jumps in. <laughs> Doop. Immense character in it, yeah. Ah, oh, right. P 
putting his own character into the character. Ah. Uh. Climbs over A, picks it up, rotates, has to put it on top of B. Hmm. Oh, wow. Uh huh. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. And he almost topples over as he gets the weight on top of him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, weird. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Their pictures move too much. Too many, like, uneven jumps between frame to frame. Hmm. So you can see the rotation. And also modeling that off of asymmetrical locomotive wheels. <laughs> you have to go partly. Wow, teaching through a translator must be hell. This is blowing my mind because I'm Vietnam flashbacking through all of the different explosions and fires that I've seen. And I'm thinking about like the different ways that they were created and, and those individuals who've animated them with an understanding of like the flow of, of vortexing hot air versus those who haven't. This is blowing my fucking mind, man. Right, it flickers. It's a completely different way of thinking. But it doesn't move. So he creates guidelines for the chunks of it and then follows them with it. That's amazing. Right, parts of it. And flickers and pops.
Do it a lot. Hmm. Hmm. How our masters made. <laughs> That's awesome. But it's also the idea that he's just tossing them. He's just doing it to do it. Hmm. Mm. Would he copy the whole thing? Yeah. Cheeto. It's also a demonstration of that hunger, you know? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Oh! Uh huh. Okay, little tiny, little tiny peeps. Right, it's like storyboarding pre storyboarding. Just of a moving character. Uh, 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 uh. Does the motion feel right? Yeah, is anybody watching me? Uh, uh, uh. That's a great idea. Let's see if they go, oh... Mm, 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 mm. Right. It's too much. <laughs> that blew my fucking mind right there wow yeah <laughs> 
not taking the time to establish everything. Uh, uh, uh. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. A full library of things to bring together. Wow. Ha <laughs> Yeah, who is that? Okay, yeah, who is that? Oh, that's... Right, already a legend. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Off to insanity. <laughs> yep. Honey, I is some bullshit. Oh, wow. Is he wearing a dress? Or is that officer's clothing? I don't know. That's insane. Note to self. Watch fucking Honeyamis. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi, Ray. Usually goes the other way, huh? <laughs> People told me to. But the fact of being a great animator enables great character design for animation purposes. No. <laughs> no, make the things move first. <laughs>
So true. So true. It depends on the viewer, man. Fully depends. Well, easily. <laughs> Wee. Whoop. Oh. Yeah, it, it is fantastic that they captured a moment like that on film. Hey, you, you did some extra scribbles in there, bud. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because of the quick ability to iterate. just need to draw yeah I mean that is the, the nature of web gen animation right people making marks not through technique but through originality and style yes yes Please say what I think you're about to say. Yes! 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 Yes. Also, yes. <laughs> I I want them to just cut to black after that. Fuck off, documentary. It's over. That's all you needed. Yeah, full size model? What are you talking about? That's just a Jeep. <laughs> Motion. All right, now we get to the editorializing for the ending. Which I don't give a fuck about. I'm just here to hear what Otsuka has to say. <laughs> 
That's the huge underlying thing, which is unfortunately not an argument that the uh, the the documentary actually makes, which is the main argument that I want to make once it ends. But we'll get there. All right, we're fully editorializing wrap up. I I hate these. I hate these so much. Uh, it also led to fulfillment of joy. It was difficult, but it was a path. It's it's still blah 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 blah. blah. Wow. Kid drawing trains. I think this is an excellent documentary, and I can say that with certainty because I looked at the length of the thing and I was like, I'm not going to sit here for an hour and 47 minutes watching a documentary about animation. Here I am, having sat here for an hour and 47 minutes and watched enthralled by a documentary about animation. That, to me, speaks of a good documentary. But I am not a person who analyzes documentary filmmaking techniques, and I'm not going to do that because I don't give a fuck. Um, it's not what interests me, and it's not, it's not my, my, my jam. You know what is my jam? That final speech from Otsuka here at the end. I desperately need to go pee right now because, again, I've been sitting here for an hour, 47 minutes, and green tea just flows right through you. Before I do, I need to rewatch through this. I need to listen to him hear, hear – I, I need to listen to him say these things again. Um, this is – this is what I was looking for. Um <laughs> I know that's that's weird to say, but I did start this this um, this video with mentioning my own like my own situation at the moment, which is that I'm taking a break to try and figure stuff out. And a core part of the stuff that I'm trying to figure out is like the the nature of of passion and the nature of um, of focus and care, because I want to create something with this channel. And I feel like I've gotten stuck in a rut and I don't know how to manage that or how to fix it. But it, it feels like um, um, I'm just following a track and I don't quite feel comfortable with that. I want to, to change things up. But this, these couple of lines from Yasuo Otsuka are exactly what I needed to hear. And so I need to hear them again. It's impossible to create such things. I'm I'm on the verge of tears. Um <laughs> there. Oh, 
tenants <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've been looking for. Okay, I'm going to go pee. <sighs> okay, again. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking wreck. I'm a fucking wreck. This is, I, and I know that this is, this must be ridiculous because, like, why, why would this impact me the way that it does? And part of the reason that I'm watching it again and again is to try to figure it out. But every time he's speaking those lines, I'm just hanging on every word. <sighs> How do you, how do I, because this isn't a how do you, this isn't a universal, this is a me and this is a personal. How do I justify my existence as a critic who is not himself an artist? And that's a, a core portion of the struggle that I've been, I've been dealing with. How do, how do I justify that existence? And the answer that I've, I've fallen back on is as long as I can produce value, as long as I can, I can put my own, my own spin on what I'm seeing and give interpretation, there is something to that that matters. But what? But, but what about that matters? And why can't other people just form their own opinions? That's what they're going to do anyway. What is the point? What is the purpose? Why do what I'm doing? Why in, in a life that is, for me, defined by, uh, in, in a lot of ways, a, a feeling of being a, 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 non, a non-contributing observer? Because I, I know myself well enough to know that I'm not an artist. I'm not. Not not in in the sense of of drawing, like sure I I can I can copy pretty well and I've got the eye for it, um and I've got the eye for for drawing down reality sure great, but but to turn that into a piece of media, to to ideate something off of my own head is never been something I'm strong at. I'm really good at interpretation and not very good at creation. So it feels like a lot of the justifications and reasonings that I come to are trying to fill that void, recognizing the flaws in my own abilities and just trying to find a way that I can contribute and then justifying that uh, uh, after the fact as like, oh, this is valuable. This is the thing that you can do. This is worthwhile. This, this is what I was looking for.
I want to break down I want to break down these lines and and try to explain why this has affected me the way that it has. First off, the nature of this little speech, that that it is directly to the audience, um, is a a potent and powerful thing. Many different media to choose from. This is the media age, the age of mass produced entertainment. And there is it's not contempt, but it's a little bit of it's the same it's the same emotion as a master woodworker looking across the street and seeing a factory that can churn out chairs that are not works of art but are functional chairs uh, and can churn out 200 of them in the time that it takes him to build one one more masterful piece it's that same feeling of the mo the world moving around you and insisting that there is value to your own life's work and there is <laughs> then there's the comparison just as you demand food that's delicious you must demand the same thing out of your entertainment and the wording that he uses not just delicious not just enjoyable he's specific here it's not about what the entertainment necessarily makes you feel it's about what it consists of in and of itself the let me pull up a list let me pull up a list um let me go to i'm just going to go to my my studio page and grab my list of playlists and go through them um from the from the beginning of the channel um the very beginning of the channel. Okay. Serial Experiments Lane. Batum, Full Metal Panic, Hero Aka, Dropped, Akame Got Killed, Dropped, Akame Got Killed is neither slick nor made with wisdom nor or passion. Zombieland Saga has some of that in it. Um, episode 8 of SSS Gridman uh, uh, has some of that in it. Sword Art Online Alicization, I dropped because there was no passion to it. There was nothing interesting to it. It was mass-produced as fuck. Uh, Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai, I feel very much the same way about. Kabaneri the Iron Fortress has a flair to it that's distinct and I think is worthwhile. But I did watch it as a late-night show, and so I wasn't looking for passion as much. Drop Boogie Pop Wawarawanai. Girls Last Tour. Girls Last Tour is not a slick show. It is not, but it is made with passion and wisdom. All the way down, all the way up through all of its layers. The the writing and the storytelling from the initial manga, which I've since gone back and, and read all of, because there's a portion of it that hasn't been adapted, um, is fantastic and is constructed with passion. And that passion e expresses itself in the way that it makes me feel. Arabaru is another is a similar situation where there there is something incredible about that despite the the outward somewhat slickness. Carolyn Tuesday I feel somewhat the same way about. Hibik is hard to say, but there is incredible ah. There's incredible potency to Hibik. It it Kyoen is the only studio that manages to make that blend the way that the way that they do. Sarazan Mai with Ikuhara at the helm is an extravagant insanity bomb of wonder, and that fits. Modazushi does not fit. Um, it's too clean. It's too uh, uh, committee written. It's too. It's too carefully constructed and mechanical. Monogatari is the like the core of. Of, of passion and wisdom in, in animation because it's also so so innovative and so incredible. Fuck, I need to rewatch Bodhagatari. But the reason that I wanted to go through this list is because I can pick out, of all of the shows that I, I've watched, I can pick out a handful that 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 transcend. That transcend um, what does he say a little bit later? That transcend <laughs> rules? <laughs> Rules about what's good and what isn't. There are shows on the list of shows that I've watched that transcend that. 
And it is the fact of their transcendence of what is good that makes them so interesting to me. And I've just never put it in those terms. Um, so instead of just going through every show on my list, which will take too long, Serial Experiments Lane. Um, um, no, 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 Girls Last Tour. No, 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 Evangelion. Um, no, 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 Jojo's, but Jojo's because of Araki, not because of David Production, so we'll skip it. Uh, Sangatsu. Sangatsu no Lion, 100%. Um, uh, no, 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 no Lucky Star, no Dumbbell, uh, uh, no Kimetsu no Yaiba, um, although I, I do enjoy Kimetsu no Yaiba, and I think it's a great, like, the pinnacle of, of modern mechanized animation creation, maybe? Uh, Carolyn Tuesday has that flair, Hibi has that flair, Sarazanmai has that flair, uh, I think that puts us at 8, Monogatari does, Hoshi I know Sora did, Hoshi I know Sora did, but, uh, production difficulties got in the way of that one, uh, Fire Force did not, and was the opposite, Spice and Wolf is fine, but it doesn't have it, uh, Vinland Saga is fine, but it doesn't have it, uh, Tatami Galaxy does, uh, Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei sometimes does, it's all over the fucking place, though. Uh, Eurocamp kind of does, in a way. It kind of does. It's hard to say that Eurocamp does, but it does. It does have that something to it. Mawaru Penguin Drum is brimming with it. Um, I think probably the best example that I've come to so far is uh, uh, Keep Your Hands Off Azoken. Um, Azoken is a show that transcends rules about what's good and what isn't. And it is the passion and wisdom that went into its production that makes it so powerful to me uh doro he, doro hedoro no kobayashi's dragon maid no simple gear hard yes uh chiai afuru no ginge euden setsu yes but no because it's such a long-running thing it's just different tower of god strong no yori moi uh weak no flip flappers yes um as uh, it has some crap to it but yes uh flip flappers fits uh, Review Starlight also fits. B Stars also fits, um, uh, despite being CG. It's definitely, there is artistic power to B Stars. Um, Chunibyo, no. Girls and Panzer, no. Although there are moments in Girls and Panzer. Uh, Sora no Woto attempts to, but it's just a mediocre anime masquerading as a better anime. Um, Tomical Market does. It has that flair to it. Princess Tutu does, although there are, are problems with it. Uh, uh, Kyokai no Kanata does not. Natsume Jincho does, and most of that is from the writing. Um, Kyoso Giga does as well. Yu Yu Hakusho, it's a mixed bag, but it does. Little Witch Academia absolutely does, and is the newest of the things in my lineup that does fit the bill, that does transcend somehow. We don't need rules about what's good and what isn't. If we did, see, this is, this is a, a deeply and powerfully validating thing to hear. Because if we did, and if I had a, a, a better mind for it, then my whole existence as a, a critic of anime could be, I write one article that explains the rules that, that describe what things are good and what things are not, and then I'm done forever, and it's over. I've said my piece. There's no need for, for interpretation or anything like that. And there's an impossibility in creating those rules if you try. What's necessary is human interpretation. And that's what I'm good at. <laughs> that's what I'm good at. Crude but lively. Keep innovating and you'll never get stuck in a rut. Gain the eye of an animator. Animation is just logical motions strung together. The construction of realism is such an interesting idea. It's one that I've never put... I'm, I know I'm jumping all over the place. That's what happens when strong emotions are involved. Apologies. Um, constructed realism is such a good idea. Uh, and, and a great way of, of putting it. Because realism in anime does not matter. Believability within a falsified world is what matters. And that's what constructed realism means. They, they dance around this idea, again, I'm jumping around, but they, each, each individual dances around some core over the course of this, over the course of this uh, uh, film, 
or this documentary. Uh, uh, Otsuka does himself. Miyazaki does as well. Um, when they when they bring, uh, uh, I think it's Mori. Uh, uh, he does as well. All of them talk about like side things, like oh, work a bunch of times and and do a bunch of things, or I, I got shown this one particular thing, or it was this one particular thing that that made me interested in this other care this other person's work. But they always dance around the core of passion and wisdom that is like the thing that that it feels like it's been emblazoned in a flaming brand on my forehead is how it feels because it's so it's such a perspective shift for me <sighs> but i hope you'll be discriminating consumers that that is what it's about. Because I'm not a critic. Because I'm not. It doesn't fit. The title doesn't fit. And I've known that it doesn't fit. It works. It's close enough. If, if, um, if you know, I, I meet a, a new person here... Or somebody comes to a, a, a Friday night get together, or like just happened, a new roommate moves in, and they ask me like, "Oh, what what do you do? You work from home. What do you what do you do?" I'm not going to say I'm an anime reactor. That doesn't mean anything, right? So it's like, okay, I, I do criticism of Japanese animated film, and I look for value in it. I look for something in it. But that's not quite right, is it? Because I'm not a critic. Exactly, I'm a consumer too. I'm a vocal consumer. It's a weird, it's a weird distinction because what a, what is a critic but a vocal consumer? But that's not true. Somebody like Roger Ebert uh, did uh, uh, have a different role in the industry, one that determines or helps other people determine what they want to watch and how they will feel about it once they've watched it. That's not the role that I take as a, a reactor, as a a non, non-contributing observer, if you want to say that. That's not the role that I take. If you come to my channel to watch a show, it's either because you value me or you value the show already and want to hear what somebody else says about it. So my role is not to sway you or change your opinion on anything. My role is to give an opinion on everything. And my, my core concern is... In the same way that an animator's core concern may be conveyance, my core concern is conveyance. How do I convey to you the way that something makes me feel and why? That is my goal. And that has always been and should always be my goal. Not to anal analyze technique. Not to, to analyze scenes in the way that they're put together. Unless doing so helps me convey to you why a thing makes me feel the way that it is. And then another part of my role or job is to allow myself to be fascinated with things that I do not understand. And then on camera with you watching here with me to seek out the answers to why those things influence me the way that they do. My goal is to be a vocal discriminating consumer who alters the way that other people consume media. Because I don't create media of my own. I create criticism, sort of. But it's not criticism. It's consumption with a voice. It's vocal consumption. Okay. Well, my my uh, personal existential crisis can wait. We got a we got a documentary to talk about, don't we? Um, my favorite thing in this documentary, and it's something that's never stated explicitly, is the the first off the choice to to follow his career from from the start into uh actually joining animation studios and stuff is fantastic and the sheer fact that we have um original ma materials from his childhood and teenage days of sketching trains and drawing things gives us an immediate impression of the innate talent of this man um the thing that becomes immediately clear is that he has an eye for detail and an eye for uh, uh, mechanical constructs and solid bodies, uh, uh, physical constructions and three dimensional space, and and we see that as he flips through his, flips through his his notes and his documents and his pages. 
the the understanding of of shadow and the the understanding of these machines and the way that they fit together is near like on graph paper an engineer drew this and he drew them with pen which tells us that this was a, a boy who was sitting there and he was able to accurately convey from eye to hand what he sees this is one of the the key things that when I did take art classes was and and still is one of the things that um, I constantly think of when I'm trying to draw, which I don't do terribly well. Um, um, my uh, uh, what was his name? My teacher. His name was Yarrett Benz. Uh, uh, Mr. Benz, if if or he didn't want to be called Mr. Benz. He wanted to be called Yarrett, uh, uh, like carrot but with a Y. Uh, Mr. Benz, if you're out there, thank you. You you influenced me to pursue a, a like not non interactive career in media somehow. You did. Uh, but one of the things that he taught was uh, don't let your brain trick you. Draw what you see, not what you think you see. And this is a an incredibly difficult thing for most students to grasp and was difficult for me to grasp. But when you look at a room and you try to draw out that room, your brain has an idea of what that room looks like that if you follow the idea, you'll put it onto paper and it's wrong. But if you look at what you see and you measure things out using your eye and you figure out the way that things actually look, you can draw a room. Otherwise, you draw a bunch of lines that don't work together and don't feel like a real space. What Otsuka demonstrates is an innate comprehension of that, of that truth, an innate understanding of how to draw things the way that they are, not the way that he should see them. And a part of that is his scientific interest in the way that things work, because he doesn't necessarily know about the, what the internal mechanisms of the, the trains and cars and jeeps and tanks actually do. He figured that out by looking at them and by observing them. So that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is the foundation that this sets in understanding how things fit, how things work together, how foreshortening works on a solid body object. Like just in these two, two pages, we see the treads of this tank from one direction with a, 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 an eye line that's effectively even with the lowest end of the, uh, the chassis of the tank, right? And we can see the vanishing point of the, the two tank treads going off into the center. And then immediately after we see, or, or immediately before, we see similar sketches of similar vehicles in different angles, right? So there's this understanding of how a thing looks from one angle versus another. And that means that he was building those, those neural connections, those connections in his brain to understand how three-dimensional objects move and shift through space when viewed from a single perspective. He was creating all of those pathways then as a kid. It's that that's never mentioned by the documentary, but it is that core understanding of how things are that quite obviously, although they never catch on to it, quite obviously when combined with his, his viewing of political cartoons and uh, uh, other people's styles allowed him to branch out. That fundamental understanding of how physical objects are and how they move and how they look from different angles is the core foundation that allowed him to experiment later and enabled him to become creative. And we see it once he starts drawing out the, the Goemon uh, sequence that he does for us or in any of the other sequences where he's just sketching things on a board. There's a... And, and they use the term like a wizard of animation a couple times and Otsuka actually uses it for Miyazaki, but I was going to use it for Otsuka in the first moments that we see him actually animating those Go Goemon sketches because there's something wizardly about it, about taking nothing and creating something out of it. And the only way that it works is if you understand what things are and how to demonstrate them on a piece of paper and then do it blows my fucking mind is what that does there's something else that's beyond beyond apparent uh in otsuka's life and that is a word that's thrown around a few times over the course of the documentary and the word is hunger hunger 
it's such a great word for that passionate desire for something because it it it's so it's universal and we all understand what hunger feels like it is a need it is a craving and otsuka himself had that hunger how else do you describe a 14 year old boy walking 11 or 12 kilometers every few days to go and sketch trains that's hunger that's going and seeking something out of your own volition to do work yourself because you want to that's different that's unique that's powerful that's hunger i know that feeling i know that feeling really well and i've lost a part of it i don't know if that's necessarily a good thing it's probably not but i don't know that it's necessarily a bad thing either because a lot of my initial hunger came from desperation and i'm not sure that that's as as strong as something like innate passion which is what otsuka demonstrates i don't know so, through work to other work. And then there is something else, which is um, kind of wonderful. They found the title Joy in Motion, and it actually encapsulates my next point about Otsuka. He takes joy in understanding the way that things move. The way, the way that he describes this friend of his who would draw and shoot with a Western, he puts his own body into those motions. He revisualizes the experiences that he's had. He's obsessed with motion. It wasn't having the guns around that made him, that made him interested in them. He was interested in them anyway. But the thing that sticks in his mind, the thing that he chooses to tell us as an anecdote, anecdote is about this American agent who would show him cool gun tricks the way that he moved not the way that he looked not the not who he was we don't even get a description of the guy just the way that he moved is what Otsuka cares about there's a focus to him and he would put these to work for Lupin so this intersection of political cartoons and trying to, to say something through um, single frames with dramatic, dramatic dynamic uh, uh, poses in them, and then being restrained, finding an almost, an almost Picasso-esque uh, uh, vision of the world and feeling emotion through the world that he could experience. And these sketches go from the detail uh, and the the perfection of his automobile and train sketches to something that is more varied and more variable where grass and plants become just sketched out scribbles and you can tell that this is a, a plant with cattails uh, sticking up but it's not detailed out in any way because he's stopped drawing things the way that he sees them he understands that well enough to do it at a whim and instead he draws them through the lens of his emotional perception creating something different entirely there's a transition present here a, a use of color and lack of color gray skies cloudy muted colors browns grays dilapidated houses there's a feeling to it French animation, other animation, the animation tests, the vibrancy of Daikobara's animation and other people's animation. And we see that hyper-realism in these like cuts of the catfish. The way that it moves through water is right. And it's too right, maybe. At least he found that out later. There is no line there. Again, like if we if we apply his oh rules about good and bad animation um, to perhaps the the skeleton situation, right? Well, if we if we draw a line that says the rule of good animation is that it imitates reality perfectly, well then Otsuka nailed that with his skeleton. Why didn't it work? Well, you say that another rule of good animation is that. It imitates reality perfectly up until the point where it's too much, and then it needs to convey things instead. So animation is not about imitating reality, but is instead about conveying emotion. Okay, but what about the wonder of seeing something realistically done, or the 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 incongruence that occurs in our brain when a, mo a moving uh, uh, or animated background sequence is off a little bit in some way? It causes a clash in our minds, and we don't like it. It stops being able to convey as effectively. How do you find a middle ground? You don't. You choose to create 
create and construct a reality that runs on its own rules. As long as the reality that's on the screen functions on its own rules, it doesn't break our comprehension of it. It doesn't break our ability to see it and understand it. It's not weird that Goemon draws his sword back too far for a human to do so. It's right, because that's how Goemon moves. And that's how the characters in the show move. And that's how the world is constructed. And so it's right. And it conveys that world without getting in the way. I will also mention that having all these excerpts from these old films is absolutely fantastic and makes this documentary uh, uh, more worth watching than it would otherwise be. Um, because it's a hell of a chore to go and find all these old films and actually watch through them because they're old and that's hard to watch. It's really helpful that a bunch of the, the mentioned sequences and stuff are shown to us. It's really great. I love this little moment that he drew himself as being devoured by the Hydra that he was trying to draw for the big midair battle. And... I love this too. I mean, it's almost they they try to like match cut it as well as they can between the 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 drawing and him himself as he flails around. But he's a kid. The dude is in his 80s and he is a child, right? It's when the fighting gets really hot, things are going clang 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 clang. It's happening. You see it in his mind. It's projecting against the back of his eyelids. He's there still. He's seeing it again. It matters. And what matters to the creator ends up mattering to the audience, right? Like when I went through that list, Symphogear, in its early seasons, it's not super well produced. It's good. It's good enough. It's not crisp. It's not clean. It's not mechanical. It's not any of that. But it has passion. It's got care to it in a weird way. It's so... And if you, if you watch through my, my first season of Sinful Gear reactions, like, the thing that strikes me more than anything is the people making this cared about it. It's an empty story at first, but there's care to it. There's passion here. Where did that come from? That makes me passionate. That's what I want to do. I want to experience as much of that as I possibly can. I want to show it to other people because showing other people things that I find exciting is wonderful. And I want to do everything in my power to try to explain and describe how cool it is when people who decide to create something genuinely care about the thing that they're creating. Ultimately, animation is about convincing the audience. I try to create perspective and immediacy. There are a couple of really great words that are all throughout this, um, this film. Perspective and immediacy as a pairing is one of those. Um, uh, and, and a couple of other, other lines as well. Like, uh, crude but lively is, is really good. Motion and emotion instead of care about every hair right we're often we're often really shocked and impressed by beautiful ganga right people will pass around uh incredible images uh of of over the top beautiful incredibly well done ganga of character faces and things like that and those are striking but they're not as striking as a character moving with realism or a character moving without realism that imparts some other emotion and conveys it well that's more powerful by far Draw what you feel. Draw constantly. Keep at it. Keep innovating and you'll never get stuck into a rut. Animation is just logical motion strung together. Construction of realism. And then there's the core. The core of Otsuka's journey is a, a demonstration of, of a pretty simple principle, which is that once you construct within yourself mastery of something through repetition, 
and through like rote copying and and drawing real objects at that point you can innovate you can try before you can try before but it won't come out right because your world's rules won't line up the reason that otsuka can draw goofy characters like lupon who don't look like human beings and then make them feel real is because he knows how real people move and he knows how real cars move and so he can draw a fake lupon car which is pretty realistic but not at all and make it move like it's real based on the rules of its own construction because he understands how things work construct mastery through repetition before innovation understand it, 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 another way to put it was was like uh in the same terms of draw what you see not what you think you see if you've drawn what you see enough times what you think you see is what you see and then what you think that isn't there when you think of new things that do not exist you draw them out as though they were real and they're believable that's another way of phrasing it that understanding of reality creates unreality or enables a human brain to create unreality Keep innovating and you won't get in a rut. But you'll lose it. You forget more and more of what you knew. And then there's there, there are the other elements, which are, in a sense, the more historical and industry-influential uh, uh, elements. The shifting from one studio to another and eventually pulling a bunch of other animators in his wake to come work on Moomin. Or... Um, um, the uh, uh, this example where they're they're talking about holes and how the film didn't have any humor in it that it was dark and serious as an animated film that it broke away from these are films for kids into these are films people weren't ready for it but there were so many scenes that are amazing for the time. We didn't even know we were breaking new ground. Oh, and the sequence with the fish, there's one portion of it, this portion, this, this cut right here, um, uh, where the fish is in shallow water, right? There are obviously rocks right under the surface. So it's not swimming. It's flopping like a fish on a, on a boat. And it's, it's just right. It's shimmying itself forward, Ugh. but it's also doing the way the, the way that fish do that. They jerk their entire one side of their muscles together and then the other entire side together. Right. And I would not have, have recognized that, but it's there in the animation. And it makes me remember that is how fish move. Thunk, 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 thunk. Absolutely incredible. But he was dropped, which sucks. But the core was Phil was Hilda. I will say that this scene that we got, uh, uh, that they showed us of, of Hilda leaving her amulet um, is dark as fuck. That is not usually, I mean, one... The go on without me, you need the take the thing, I'll stay here and hold them off is uh, almost a cliche, right, at this point. But what if it wasn't? In a world where it wasn't, that's like nothing. Like nothing else. But there's another element to it, which is that she looks down and drops the sword that she's carrying and lets them come and lets herself die. There's no reason to keep fighting. Her, her mission is done. <gasps> Whoa. I witnessed firsthand what great direction can achieve. The creation of emotion, not just through the animation, but through bringing together different portions of the film and, and through having a vision of what something will be. And it tracks. This is right, right? This is, this is important, right? To see something and feel something from it 
And to be able to pinpoint who made that happen, there's something important about that. I don't know what it is, but I know that it matters. Maybe I'll figure it out in another year of doing this. Maybe I'll figure out what's important about it. But I know that it's important, and isn't that enough? Even if I don't know where I'm going with it, even if I don't know what this is going to turn into for me, understanding these things is worthwhile. And the fact that I can, I can continue to grow in my understanding of these things while surviving is insane and, and something that I, I need to be more consciously grateful for. Because I am in, in the most enviable position that a person can be in. And that is, not, that is not to be wealthy, that is not to be stable, that is not to have friends, that is not any of those things. That is to be actively engaged in something that you are passionate about and to be able to survive doing it. I think is the most enviable position that any human being can be in. And that's where I am. And it just kind of clicked. Again. It's clicked before and it'll unclick in time, I'm sure. But this is what I needed. This is what I needed. I was hungry for this. Because I'm hungry to be hungry again. This is also... This portion of the film is also deeply inspirational to me. Uh, Otsuka, a legend among animators, a teacher, a mentor to other legends among animators, right? Tells the, the interviewer, I realized that directing was beyond me. A lot of people would jump at, at being a director. I recognized that that wasn't me. I'm an artisan. I like crafting interesting details. But direction is beyond me. That big picture, I don't want to deal with it. And what's so crazy is that we get other, other animators who worked under him saying, well, to describe Otsuka, he's somebody who sees the big picture, who understands the whole of things. But he disagrees. He knows where his strengths are and he pursues those. I think that's deeply validating <laughs> in, a, in a way. Because we all have things that we're like, man, I should be good at this, but I'm not. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Because if I were, for example, an animator, right? If I were, if I were an animation student, student and my purpose in this channel was to glean from it techniques and ideas that I would then go on to use myself in animation, that would make sense, right? That would be logical. But that's not the case. Likewise, if I thought of myself as a, a, a creative director or somebody of that sort, then maybe I would be thinking of techniques and ideas and, and ways of shooting scenes and constructions of, of media in the interest of eventually going and directing something of my own. But I'm not. That doesn't interest me. I don't... I'm fascinated by the people over the border in the creative side. I'm fascinated by them, and I'm in awe of them, but I'm not one of them. And knowing that, and knowing that that might be okay, it's pretty powerful. It's a pretty, pretty valuable thing to hear from, from the lips of a man who passed this morning. It's pretty valuable, huh? Because he kept working right up until the end. And he kept changing people and influencing animators and teaching right up until the end. Forget about directing. Do something else. Create the way that you want to create and follow your strengths. This, this sequence, by the way, is fucking awesome. It kind of makes me want to watch this movie. Like, those bats turn into doves as they fly. That's so cool. And then on to Lupin. And Moomin. Um, I, I found the, the interesting thing about... Um, the way that they describe Moomin, and I'm not sure that I, if, if I'm interpreting this correctly, but the thing that I found most interesting about this was the way that they described um, the construction of each episode and each story uh, as, 
as there is a set cast of characters, all of whom are very different, have their own expressions, their own reactions, their own ways of dealing with things. And every week, something changes, something happens, a new person arrives, a, a problem occurs, there's a struggle, whatever, and all the characters react to it differently. And that's where we, that's what we mine for the information that will become the core of the episode, that will become the story. That's an interesting way of constructing things. And it's one that seems simple and straightforward, but if you'd never thought of a show that way, how innovative is that as an idea? It's brilliant. It's utterly brilliant to create a, a serialized story without creating a serialized story. You just create a cast, a vibe, a mood, a place. And also to break out of certain things that you're known for being good about or good at. The style stuff for Lupin and the, some of the style stuff for just character design and understanding how, how characters are crafted is stuff that I am just going to be applying constantly. And seeing all of these shots from Lupin are, are super cool. They're super cool. And ridiculous and absurd and wonderful in, in that way driving around on half a car, banging it with the, uh, with the steering wheel as you chase down uh, 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 Goemon. But um, eventually, you both just crack into laughter. That's beautiful. It's also, I mean, they chose the sequence, I'm sure, because they were going to segue then into two joyous compatriots who rode around together, you know? Fan-fucking-tastic. And then this is just wizardry. It's wizardry. He sees in a, a set of eight lines a person. And he sees the way that that person is going to move. And he, he sees all of that before he ever puts one of those lines on the page. But then he does. And it's right. Why? Because he understands the mechanics of human beings and the, the mechanics of cameras and the mechanics of, of drawing in an intuitive way that it can only be the result of intense and and effective study of reality this documentary is is chock full of of interesting examples and anecdotes and things but the core the core of it for me is otsuka's otsuka's parting words um the message that's inherent to it of Try again and again and again and again and again and again and eventually some skill will make it its way into your bones in a way that you can't help. The relationships between individuals working in the industry and the way that they regard each other as artists is also fascinating and powerful. And then some lines, some specific lines, like keep innovating and you'll never get into a rut crude but lively animation is just logical motion strung together constructed realism perspective and immediacy thought versus reality although that's mine the construction of mastery through repetition before innovation takes its place these things are more than interesting they are valuable and perhaps just maybe me sitting here and pointing at them and saying these are valuable maybe is in a, end of itself valuable. I don't know. But it makes me think it might be worthwhile. It might be worth trying. Thank God for this, for this documentary. Rest in peace, Otsuka-san. And thank you. And thank all of you. I'm going to wrap there. Me to you, boo. This documentary, it was really good. I hope you also enjoyed it. I hope to catch you next week for something different. See you there. Peace.